In this introduction to JBoss Mobile, the first thing I want to show you is JBoss Developer Studio version 8 and how you get the hybrid mobile tooling installed so you can actually start building Cordova based applications. So the first thing you'll notice when you pop up JBoss Developer Studio 8 is JBoss Central and it's been updated to have a hybrid mobile project right on the front page. So if you click on that, uh, you can basically see that required features to use this wizard need to be installed. You can install it from this mechanism, but I'm going to hit no right now and show you another feature, which is the software update tab. So on the software update tab, you'll see a list of different components that you can install uh, within into JBoss Developer Studio. There might be third-party components that might be valuable to you, uh, or in this case, the hybrid mobile tooling is also available on this tab. So you should be familiar with it, and you should be familiar with JBoss Central in general. So if you can see right here, I have JBoss Hybrid Mobile Tools plus Cordova Sim, and I'm going to click on that and say install and update. You'll then be prompted with a list of different tools to install, and you can see here we have things like Live Reload, Mobile Browser Simulator, uh, an update to the Visual Page Editor, so you can actually see things in real time, and uh, some of the most important ones here being like the Apache Cordova Simulator. Now hit Next, and Next, accept the license agreement, and finish. Then you're going to be prompted with a security warning. This is fairly standard for Eclipse. Just hit OK. And then you'll be prompted uh, to restart JBoss Developer Studio. So go ahead and hit Yes and let it go through its restart process. Now that we've got everything installed, if you click here on the Servers tab, you can see I have no servers installed at this point. I can click back on the Software Update tab, and you'll notice when that list populates that, that it'll, uh, it'll disappear unless you say Show Installed. But just be familiar with the uh, uh, Software Update tab here. It's very important for you getting new additional plugins installed to your core JBoss Developer Studio. Let me go back here to the Getting Started tab, and now what I want to do is build a new hybrid mobile project, and I'm going to select Hybrid Mobile Project from the uh, first tab here, I'm going to give it a name. Let's just call it Hybrid 3001, just to give it a unique name. This right down here is typically a package name, like in the traditional Java package structure. It needs to be universally unique, so that's something you should keep in mind. If you do intend to deploy this to an iOS device at some point in the future, this needs to be universally unique. So therefore, I use my domain name and then the name of the application. I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to select the uh, uh, Cordova engine I want to use. I'll just pick the latest and greatest here with 3.5.0. And then I'm going to hit Finish. Once that project's been generated, you can immediately open up the index.html. And you can see right away uh, some new changes that have been done with JBoss Developer Studio 8. Uh, one is this jQuery mobile palette, which we've had for some time, but there's also an Ionic palette. Now by default, we're going to work with jQuery Mobile for this first demonstration because uh, it is easier to use, easier to get started with than Ionic is. But we'll show you the Ionic in a future um, in, in a future uh, demonstration. Uh, I can click on the Visual Source tab and kind of get a, a feel for what that thing looks like. I tend to work in source mode, uh, but one of the things I immediately like doing is doing a right click and saying Run as with uh, Run as Run with Cordova Sim. And with the Cordova, Cordova Sim environment, I can see what it's going to look like on the mobile device, more or less. Uh, so let me go ahead and move this over here. All right, yeah, just kind of get it out of the way. Um, and then I'll move this over here just a tad. So we have a little bit more room to work with here. So now as I make changes to this, so if I come here and say pard by JBoss and hit save, uh, the default operation is to come over here and hit refresh. And you can see now it says JBoss. 
But if I don't want to go through that save refresh process all that often and navigate around the page, what I'm going to do is actually come over here to the Servers tab and hit New Server. And this is a very nice little tool for you to kind of get going quickly and that's uh, install the Live Reload Server. So I'm going to hit Finish. And this is basically, if you've not heard of the Live Reload Protocol before, it's incredibly valuable. It's very useful for web development, even with a regular browser. They have a plugin that you can download for your Chrome browser or Firefox browser. In this case, we've actually implemented the server protocol in a little base server that we store right here inside uh, the Eclipse environment. And now as I make changes, let me come back over here and say Enable Live Reload. Now as I make changes to this uh, item here, powered by Red Hat, you can see it updates in real time. And so that's very valuable when it comes to interactive application development. So now I'm going to delete this whole section since I don't want any of that uh, original look and feel. And I can even come in here and wipe out this style sheet if I want. So I really have a, a bare bones application now. So you can see basically we have an index.html right here in the www folder. And I have a JavaScript right here in the JavaScript folder. And those are the, real, the primary files you interact with to do a, a basic um, Cordova-based application. So everything in Cordova land is going to be JavaScript, HTML, CSS. And you can immediately start building your application the way you would want. So if I want uh, a brand new page here, so uh, we'll make this a single page application. That means multiple pages in a single HTML file. And I'm going to come in here and say this is a, um, a new contact. All right, so I'll give that the header title give it the footer title, kind of see what it basically looks like here in this little window. Uh, I could add a back button, I could change the theme, I'm going to leave all those defaults. One critical item here is add reference to JavaScript and CSS. Just be aware of that one. Uh, you need that only done one time for your project. Uh, we are clever enough to go out and check to see if it's already been added. And you can see here when I do that, it adds in the jQuery and jQuery mobile uh, from the CDN directly into your index.html. And you can see our default page layout here. When I hit save, it updates over here in Cordova Sim. Um, but if I wanted to, I could also check out the visual source view of this, and, and then I can navigate around here. So let's say I want to edit that component as an example. Page content goes here. Um, so let's go back to source mode, and let's add some more functionality to the screen. Uh, the thing I really like showing off is specifically the just the HTML5 text input field. So this is really HTML5. It's not really a jQuery thing specifically or a Cordova thing. It's just what's out there in modern browsers today. So I can say I want a name field and I can use a placeholder uh, first and last just to make it obvious to the user that we need a first and last name in that one field. I can kind of make it disabled. I can make it autofocus required. So placeholder and things like um, required, as well as the new types, are all part of HTML5. We'll talk more about those types in a second. So let's hit finish here. Uh, so there we go, name. So I'm going to add another text field. In this case, I'm going to add uh, email address. All right. So email type email. Okay, and again, you can set the placeholder or the pattern, but type email means that HTML5 will automatically enforce that it be an email when you see it added into the system. So we'll see that in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly knock out a couple more of these items. Let's get a phone in, and that'll be type tell. All right, and then we're going to add in a uh, birth date. So type date, 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 date. There it is. And I'm going to take all the other defaults, hit finish. Uh, but you can kind of see what this thing's starting to look like. All right, so let's say that's our basic application. We're not going to put any logic behind it at this point. We can. Uh, all we have to do is update that index uh, index.js to point to our remote REST endpoint. In this case, we're just knocking out the user interface and trying to get a feel for it. If you notice, I do have a little error message in here. Type null is an object. Uh, we'll just correct that real quickly, because what's happening here is I deleted the div um, in the user interface that that guy's you know, poking at. So we, we basically want to go ahead and just comment that section out right there. Um, but for now, I can now test this immediately. On, we've already seen a Cordova sim. We have a good feel for what it looks like. In this case, in iPhone mode, I can change the skin. Maybe I want to look at it and you know, what a Samsung Galaxy would look like, a Note or a tablet. Uh, I can rotate it right or left to see what it looks like horizontally. Um, we even have a debugging environment, so you can go and uh, this actually sets up against Chrome, so you can do, use the Chrome debugger interactively through that JavaScript as well. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave this guy alone. Um, we'll talk more about the other capabilities in Cordova Simulator, like the accelerometer, um, battery status, network status in a second. But for now, I'm going to right-click and say Run As, 
and I can say run on Android device and if I have a USB plugged in Android device with the developer settings it'll deploy immediately to the Android phone uh, but I can also say run as uh, run on iOS simulator and this actually will generate for you now the Xcode project you have to have Xcode installed you have to be on a Mac uh, but if you have Xcode installed and a Mac uh, then you can basically say run as iOS simulator and it'll pop up down here uh, and you can see it's running right here and the reason I wanted to show you this simulator though not only is it a nice little Xcode project now uh, but you can if you show if you edit these fields you can see here there's the name field and watch what happens when I move to the email field you notice there's a different unique keyboard for the email field and that's incredibly important for a mobile based application because um, I don't know if you've used a lot of mobile websites or mobile applications, but when they don't give you the right keyboard, it's definitely painful. A really good example of that is the phone number. I want to put a number in here uh, versus an email address. This also works for the URL type as well, so if you have to add a website. And then the birth date has a date picker, so that's very nice where you can come in here and specifically interact with the, um, the field with a native keyboard. So I think that's incredibly valuable. And that's simple, simply an HTML5 trick. And the Apache Cordova, of course, makes this a nice little application you can deploy right through the App Store. So let me go ahead and shut down the IR simulator. Uh, and that, but that right there gets you kind of started. Uh, to recap, again, JBoss Central, you would go into the Software Update tab and make sure that the JBoss Hybrid Mobile Tools were installed. Then you come back after the restart. You can say, I want a new hybrid mobile project. Uh, again, on this third item here, make sure to give it a unique name. So you can see I used Hybrid 3001 and then of course my package name there. This is the name that you will often see in on the phone itself. So you might make that a little prettier. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then once you have it up and running, you just basically edit the HTML, edit the JavaScript, and then you start deploying it to actual devices. There are a couple additional steps you need to know and be aware of when it comes to deployment to an iPhone. One, you have to have a Mac to have Xcode installed and the iOS simulator installed. So just be aware of that. Uh, another thing you should be aware of, if you do try to run on an Android device, you do have to have the Android SDK installed. Uh, so that is a feature that's required there. But if you're just getting started and you kind of want to get a feel for this, Cordova Sim, of course, is your best friend. Uh, don't forget to use the Live Reload feature and enable Live Reload here but you can immediately start interacting with it uh, and, seeing, uh, and seeing what it's going to look like in a, in a mobile form factor. All right, that's all for now, and we're going to show you some more in a little bit.